see the church, global church, but also us as a local church, as a local expression of the church. We're called to be individuals, yes, connected to God, but we're also called to be a part of the body of Christ, the temple that He is building all of us into, where His presence dwells. He inhabits our praises. I want to read a couple of scriptures to you this morning. Ephesians 2, which if anyone wants homework, you don't know what you want to read this week in the Bible, you can read Ephesians 2. That's your homework. You can write it down in your phone and send Pastor Thresh your notes. Um, Ephesians 2, 18 to 22. Now all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because what Christ has done for us. So now you are, so now you Gentiles are no longer strangers, you are citizens along with all of God's holy people. Can you hear some of the language? Let us slow down to hear about the connected language that is here. We are citizens along with all of God's holy people. You're members of God's family. Together, we are His house. That's family language. Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. And the cornerstone is Christ Jesus Himself. We are carefully joined together in Him becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Through Him, you Gentiles are being made part of the dwelling where God lives by His Spirit. We're connected because of what Jesus has done. Have you ever thought about the fact there's no only children in the Kingdom of God? (laughs) There's no only children because we're brothers and sisters. When you make a decision to become a Christian, you're instantly adopted into the family. You know you have access to all the inheritance in heavenly places. God says, I now call you a child of God from the instant moment that you make a decision. That's incredible. But it's not just me and God, I've inherited a family. All of us, we become family, which is, it's a privilege, but it can be hard to fully comprehend His Holy Spirit dwells with us personally, but I'm also being built in as a brick and I relate and I can resonate with being a brick sometimes. I'm a brick. I'm a part of the building being built in one by one. We all have our individual stories, but we're also part of a collective bigger story, interwoven, knitted in. We're a part of, we're we're becoming forming into God's people. I, this is a holy gathering. It's a significant gathering when the people of God get together. You can be a part of all sorts of clubs and you can be a member of any sort of gym, and, but being a part of the church is different because the Spirit of God is here. This is a transformative community. Jesus is alive and He changes our lives. And when we gather as the people of God, God promises that His Holy Spirit is here. That's why when we worship and we hear from God and even we can have our bodies healed when we gather, we can have visions and and we can hear directly from the presence of God because God is in this place when we gather. It is a holy place where His Holy Spirit dwells. Part of my identity as a believer is being a part of the church. And this morning we're just taking a slow look at usness. Possibly usness doesn't get a lot of airtime in your prayer life. Maybe because it's not a real word. Maybe because you just haven't thought so much about it. Lord, let us be aware of how you've called us together as a people of God. Rick Warren in Purpose Driven Church says the community outside of the church calls us that church. A crowd who comes and you just, maybe you're just visiting, you say, oh, this church. But a member of the congregation calls it our church. And we're called not to just be consumers, but we're actually called to be contributors as a part of the church. And so I ask you the question this morning, How do you feel? Do you say this is our church? Or you say, oh, this church or that church? 
our church. We're called to belong. C.S. Lewis wrote a paper about the word membership and how it's totally lost its meaning in modern culture because it's watered down to become like a stuffy. If you say, I'm a member of that, it, it feels cold, impersonable, but it was actually rooted in biblical terms. The word member comes from being members of the body, actually a part of the body. And you know what? We, and we know and we've had some people in our church who have had significant incidences with their body. And we know that there's vital parts of your body. If you're disconnected from the body, it's bad news for the body and it's bad news for the part that's disconnected because there's no life. Vital organs, you're a vital part of the body, a living organism. Have you thought about the fact that you are vital to the body of Christ? Romans 12, 3 to 5 says, Because the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. Don't think you're better than you really are. It's always a good sober warning. Be honest in your evaluation of yourself. Measure yourself by the faith God has given us. Just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. The context of this next scripture is around sexual immorality and it's talking about the importance of what we do with our bodies. But it says in 1 Corinthians 6, 15, by the power, by His power, God raised the Lord from the dead and He will raise us also. But did you not know your bodies are members of Christ Himself, that we are connected to Christ's body, that, our, that we are significant, Sometimes we focus so much on our uniqueness that we miss what it means to be connected in. And this morning, I just wanted us to slow down a bit and let God minister to us about what it looks like to be connected to the body. I'm going to read another big um, chunk of Scripture. And would you open your heart and let God minister to you through this 1 Corinthians 12, 12 to 27. One body with many parts. The human body has many parts, but the many parts make up the whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews and some are Gentiles, some are slaves and some are free, but we've all been baptised into one body, one spirit, and we all share the same spirit. Yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. If the foot says, I'm not a part of the body because I'm not a hand, That doesn't make it any less part of the body. And if an ear says, I'm not part of the body because I'm not an eye, would that make it any less part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? Or if the whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? But if our bodies have many parts and God has put each part just where He wants it, how strange a body would be if it only had one part. Yes, there are many parts but only one body that I cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. In fact, some parts of the body that seem the weakest and the least important are the most necessary. And the parts we regard as less honourable are those we clothe with the greatest care. So we carefully protect those parts that should not be seen while the more honourable parts do not require special care. So God has put the body together. That extra honour and care are given to some parts that have less dignity. This makes a harmony among the members so that all members can care for each other. Lord, let us care for each other. It's not just me and God and I'm a part of the body and the foot's really important and what's going on with the foot and is the foot getting enough attention? What, what parts are requiring covering and care? Is there an area of the body that deserves dignity and, and covering that, we're, that, I, that I need to care for? All parts, if one part suffers, all parts suffer with it. And if one part is honoured, all parts are glad. All of you together are Christ's body and each of you are a part of it. We need to reclaim the image of member what it means to be a church member. 
a member of the body. When you hear that word, yeah, I'm a member of East Coast, but I'm a vital organ. I'm a vital part of that body moving. I am significant and called and actually a part of my identity as a believer is Jesus died for me and He died so that I could spend eternity with Him, but He also died for His church. The Bible says that Christ died, laid His life down for the church and and in its great mystery and sometimes strangeness. It's a mystery to think I'm a part of the body, isn't it? You think, and then you don't get too far down a rabbit hole to think, am I an ear? How would I feel about being a nose? Don't go too far down that rabbit hole. (laughs) But is there someone who needs covering and protecting that we all carry a role and a part to be a part of the body, but to look out for those that need clothes, to be covered and to have dignity, togetherness, our identity as the people of God. And I challenge you to push back on the individualism that seeks to say it's just you and God and no one else matters. (laughs) And we reclaim this calling. When I make the decision to accept Jesus, I became a child of God and I became a part of the family. I'm an heir and I have an eternal inheritance. And I'm not only a child of God, but God is making a home and a family and I'm called to be a part of it. Some interesting screaming happening behind us. I'm sure they're having fun. (laughs) These, all of these concepts can sit really theoretically and metaphorically and you can go, yeah, that's nice and it's so uh, image-based, but, but what does this practically look like for us day to day, week to week, as we open up our hearts and realise that we've been called to be a part of the body of Christ, that this is, we've been called to be a part of the church, that life together, how does this really work out in my life? Do the values of my life reflect a person who is knitted in, built in to the body? When it comes to the church, Do I see myself as a member, as a part of the body? One part of the body can't say, I don't need you. I heard this amazing story. I love Hope 103.2. Thank God for the Christian radio station. But so this guy was just sharing a story, a testimony this week. And he was a barrister and he attended church and he just thought everyone in his church was a bit, he didn't really have time for them. So he came, he went to church, but he thought they were a little bit plebish. That's my own language. But you know, he was his smart guy. He's a bit above everybody. And they asked him to serve on the coffee team. It's like pun intended, barrister, barista. And he, he thought at first he responded, no, I'm, I'm too good for that. I won't do that. Anyway, somehow they got him on the team. And by serving coffee, he just met people in the church and he heard their stories. And he actually fell in love with the people (laughs) that he was worshipping with and he was going to church with because he realised these are amazing people. These are amazing people with incredible stories that Jesus died for. One part of the body can't say, I don't need you. Slow down long enough to know and be known. Sitting at a table, hearing stories I'd never heard. It inspired me and built faith and put a fire in my belly. Just hearing the the three women's stories a couple of weeks ago. Life together, built in. Connect groups, you know our connect groups used to be called cells. Because in the body we've got made up of many little cells. And as we get bigger, we actually need to get smaller so that we can be connected in and known and to know others. And a part of going to connect group during the week is to be known and to know each other. And I love my connect group. They've been getting quite a a bad rap during this series. Suresh threw them under the bus. They do, they really attend and we really share our hearts. Um, People will be like, I wanna come out of the senior pastors group before everything gets aired on on the platform. 
There may be many of you who could prattle off all of these scriptures and you say, yeah, yeah, Lou, I know it all. (laughs) The challenge is not knowing it, it's actually living it. (laughs) The challenge is actually being built into the body. (laughs) The challenge is slowing down long enough to not just hear stories, but share your story as well and to be known by others. And I'm not gonna circle back, but my first message in this series was real versus ideal. And I also have another sermon series, I mean, another sermon that would fit with it, which is called Expect Poo. And that is very biblical because it's from the Scripture that says, if you have oxen in the stalls, there's going to be poo. There will be mess. And so when we're around people, there's mess and there's challenge. And so I'm not gonna go into that this morning because it's not the focus of my message, but I wanna slow down and say, have you considered what it means to be built into the body? Have you considered what it means to be the people of God, a holy people that He's forming us, that He's called us? Identity as the people of God, sacred, holy. I love when we sing holy because it's a holy gathering when the people of God gather. It's not about this building. It's a beautiful building, but wherever we gather and He inhabits our praises. Would you stir your heart even when you gather in your connect groups this week and think, oh, this is holy. This is special. The people of God gathering together. What a privilege to be in each other's company. Would the band come up and just join me? Please. I forgot my please. I want to read one more scripture. To you as we come to a close in 1 Peter 2, 4 to 10. And I'm reading the extent of this because this gathering is only made possible because of who Jesus is in our lives. We only come together because of who He is. He's the living stone. As you come to Him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to Him, You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For the Scriptures say, See see, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen precious cornerstone. The one who trusts in Him will never be put to shame. So it's saying Jesus is the foundation. He's the one in which we build our lives on, the precious cornerstone. And that stone that causes people to stumble, that rock that will make them fall, they stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people. Those who decide to follow Jesus are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of Him who call you out of darkness into His wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are a people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. A royal priesthood. We're royal because Jesus is King. You know, just even, I don't know if people saw what happened in the opening ceremony just this week and there was, um, it's, it's been quite controversial controversial, and, and really significant about the, the times that we're living in. Uh, but I think if, if people haven't seen it, you can just Google it later. But Jesus has always been rejected. He's always been persecuted. To be a Christian is the least popular option right now. It is not on trend to be a Christian. It is not the trending thing to do, but Jesus is the way, the truth and the life and He is eternal life and He is King and nothing can change that. And the darker the days get, the brighter Jesus gets 
And the more opposition comes on the church, the greater the power of God we're going to see. So don't fret about what is happening in the world. I think we should worry about have we got fire in the church. Are we seeing when people walk into church, are they realising that Jesus is the one who is the only one who can redeem and save us? And when we die, we're going to stand before God. As Luther said, just me before God. And Jesus has paid for my eternal life. And the most beautiful, inclusive message of Jesus is the fact that He desires that all will be saved. And that He went to that cross while we were still sinners. And He died on our behalf when we were rejecting Him. But Jesus is King. And so by default, we're royalty, a royal priesthood. But when we gather, we come and we bring worship We bring intercession like a priesthood would do, but not just ourselves. We are priests. We're a kingdom of priests, but we're a priesthood. This is our us-ness. So I want you to think about when we worship, we're doing it together and it's significant and His Holy Spirit falls and is present and heaven loves it when we worship God together. When we're in unity, it's what we've been created to do. A A priesthood of believers where we bring intercession and ministry, our lives of worship, where when we bring our offerings and our giving before God, that's what we've been called to serve God. We're a holy nation, we're set apart, we're going to look different, we're going to be different. <laughs> set apart as God's holy people. Life together, we pray together. We worship together. We've been called to do this together. We grow together. We're knit in together. I'm stronger because you are with me. And Christ in you builds me up and vice versa. And He's called us to be knit together as the body, as the bride, as the temple. Matthew 18, 20 says, For where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. He's with us this morning. He's here. Life together. We've got life together here. And then when we die, we've got life together in eternity. (laughs) Life together to life together. If Jesus doesn't return in our lifetime, which is debatable, everyone's got their own sense. But if Jesus doesn't return, (laughs) I've got life together and I've got people waiting for me already in eternity. (laughs) I've got treasures in heaven. But if Jesus does return, we've got life together when He comes. Would you all close your eyes in this moment? I really wanted to this morning bring us to that eternal perspective. The Bible says, don't store up for yourself treasures on earth where moths can eat it, thieves will steal it, could get rid of mold ridden, mold sucks. Things can be destroyed very easily. But the Bible says to store up for ourselves treasures in heaven. The only things that are eternal, the Word of God's eternal, <laughs> Jesus, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, Jesus, they're eternal. But we've been called to have eternity written The Bible says we have eternity written in our hearts. That the only thing we can take from this life to the next is precious people, treasures in heaven. Have you made the decision to follow Jesus this morning? I really had salvation on my heart today. And just as that script, and it wasn't a scripture, the quote from Luther said, before God we stand alone. And maybe you've never made the decision to follow Jesus, but you've thought, oh, well, you know, my mum and dad have always believed or my spouse believes or, or just coming, coming to church is enough, but you've never made that personal decision. I believe perhaps there's one or two people to make that decision this morning. That you know that you know that Jesus died for you that His forgiveness 
on that cross is for you, that you wanna receive Him as your Lord and Saviour this morning. If that's you and in your heart, you know you need to make that decision. There's been things even in the message that have jumped out to you and you think, I must respond today. Don't wait another day. Today is the day of salvation. With every head bowed and eye closed, I wanna ask you if you need to make that decision today, I'd love for you to put up your hand so I can pray with you. If you wanna make that decision today to follow Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We might all just stand to our feet. I'm gonna close in prayer and then I've asked the team if we could just sing without the music, how great is our God, just with voices. And if we could just enjoy the privilege of usness and God inhabiting our praises as we come as a royal priesthood of believers bringing our offerings of praise and sacrifice before God. Would we have a revelation of not only of that we have been saved ourselves individually, but that we have been born into a family, that we are part of a body. Lord God, I pray for anyone right now who feels deeply disconnected. I pray that your Holy Spirit would minister to them. Lord God, I pray that you would open our eyes to those of us who have been closed off from connecting with others. I pray for walls to fall down right now where there's been a fence that has literally constricted someone's growth. I just see it's been, and it's an, an offence in church, whether it's this church or another church, and it's constricted your growth in God. I pray that it'd be broken right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I speak the Name of Jesus. And I pray for health and connection and friendship and reconciliation and restoration. And would we all carry the care and the responsibility of the body of believers. And may we continue to figure out what it is to do life together until we go to meet you, Jesus, or until you come back and meet us first. But may we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Let us not just look like a church, but Lord, let us be the church that you died for, Jesus. The altar, the front of the church will be open for prayer if anyone wants to come forward for prayer of any kind. I just sense the Holy Spirit's really here for miracles and breakthrough this morning. So if there's something that's just pressing on your heart, you'd love prayer, but otherwise I'm gonna throw it to the team to sing. And would you sing with your voices too? Say with me how great is our God And all will see how great, how great is our God How great is our God Say with me how great is our God And all will see how great How great is our God. Let's sing it again. How great. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great. How great. Is our God is the name above all names? You're the name above all names. You are worthy of all praise, and my heart will sing how great. 
is our God. You're the name above all names. You're the name above all names. You are worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great is our God. service during worship I'd had this prayer before God about this building and this area and I was praying to God saying Lord would your presence be so thick and heavy in this building and in this industrial industrial estate that as people drive through the driveway they would encounter your spirit lord i pray that your presence would be so heavy upon this place that people that are our neighboring factories would be blessed because they're our neighbors oh god i pray for visions and encounters to take place that people would be drawn in because of your presence father god i'm feel uh, very bold and audacious by asking that, God. But I ask that it would be so thick and heavy, Your presence in this place as people drive past that building.
defend that they would be hit with the Holy Spirit, drive safely, of course, but they would encounter the presence of the living God. Lord, we intercede on behalf of our community as a kingdom of uh, of priests this morning, a royal priesthood. We intercede on behalf of our city and our nation. Lord, we pray that You would be known, Father God. Lord, I pray for things that took place in revivals past where people got caught up and stuck in trances when people would be like caught up and encounter heaven, Lord, or hell and be led to You. Father God, I pray for unusual miracles to take place in this church. Father God, I pray for people to be set free from the demonic in this church. Lord God, I pray for people to be led to Jesus from Monday to Saturday. Lord God, I pray that You would anoint the hands of everyone in this auditorium and those listening online. They would have holy hands, Lord. Lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Lord God, I pray for anyone who is not baptised with the Holy Spirit right now to encounter the fire of God would fall upon them in the mighty Name of Jesus. I pray for a baptism of Your Holy Spirit, that people would begin to speak in tongues for the first time right now as the Spirit gives them utterance. Would You open up Your mouth in faith if You've wanted to receive that gift and You have not? Would You by faith begin to pray and pray out and say, Thank You, Jesus. Begin to by faith open Your mouth and declare the goodness of God. We are a kingdom of priests, a royal priesthood. We are in intercession right now. Who are you praying for? Who in your family doesn't know the Lord? Who needs a breakthrough? What is the most impossible thing you could ask God for this week? Father God, I pray for financial miracles. I pray for healing miracles. Lord God, we thank You that you nothing is impossible for You. And it is a privilege to be a part of your church. It is a privilege to know You personally and to be a part of the family of God. You are blessed to be a blessing. Would you be set free as you go forth in faith and believe that others would be released in Jesus' Name? Would the very things that God, you're believing God to set you free of, would you pray for others and see them set free? And by your faith, would you be set free as well? Father God, I pray for multiplication. I pray for miracles in the margins of our life. I pray that we would slow down long enough to see where You're already moving. Would You open our eyes to how You've called us to be a part of Your body. In Jesus' mighty Name, Amen. I just feel like I could have prayed for two hours just then, but I thought You must stop. At some stage, You must stop. In Jesus' Name, the service is over. God bless you. For those who joined us online, hang around for a coffee after the service.